Now let's take a look at how Power Query works first. Since I have this my data in my Power BI desktop right now, if I want to see the data itself, I will simply come here to my table view or my data view on the left hand side. If I go there to click on that table view, I can see the data I loaded in and I can select each of the um, data tables from the right hand side. Uh, I'm going back to my report view on the left hand side. And if I want to go back to my power query, I will simply come over here to where I have transform data. When I click on that button, transform data, my power query editor is going to be opened up again. And we are going to look at how power query works. First, power query uses a language called the M language, which you can see inside the formula bar of Power Query like this. And every single transformation you do inside Power Query is going to create a new step for you in the applied steps area. And you are probably wondering why exactly do we now have four steps since we haven't done any transformation yet? Well, that's it goes back to say that Power Query uses the M language for every single action and every single action forms a transformation. Transformations are usually done step by step. And even as we have imported this data into our Power Query, four steps have already been recorded by default, right? Now, if we go through each of the steps one by one, we can actually understand what transformation took place for us to have these four. Remember, first thing we did was to click on Get Data and selected Excel Workbook, and we were able to connect to that Excel Workbook, and that's why we have our first source here as the first step in our query. So if I go to click on the Source step, it's going to provide me with a workbook that doesn't really show the data that is inside that workbook. Now, when you remember that immediately we were able to connect to that Excel workbook, there was a navigator window that showed up where I had to tick on the boxes for each of the workbooks that I was bringing in. So when I ticked on the box for consumer, that's what gave me the consumer data set. And that's why I have my number two step here in my consumer query as navigation. And at this point, I was having exactly the same data that we had in the Excel. So if I go back to the Excel file on the consumer worksheet, you will see that the first row of that worksheet is the heading. And then we have nine other rows to make it a total of 10 rows. And if I go back to that, my power query editor, you are going to see that this is exactly what I have as well. The first row contains the header and I have nine other rows to make it a total of 10 rows in this consumer worksheet data. However, because when you are working inside Power Query, there are some standard shape that the data has to carry, which includes the fact that your data must have proper headers. So instead of having column one, column two, column three as our heading, we are supposed to have the actual headings for each of these columns in display. So if I go to my number three step, you are going to see that I have a step there called promoted headers. And at this point, you can see that my total data rows now becomes nine because that first row actually is not a data row. Rather, it is a header. And then, apart from having headers applied to your data, another standard thing or standard shape that your data is meant to have is to ensure that every single column in your data set have a defined data type. So for example, since the first column here contains date values, then this date column or this other date column is supposed to have a data type of date. Now, the second column for ship mode has some text values, then this column is supposed to have a data type called text. And if I scroll to the right hand side where I have sales, my sales column has some kind of decimal numbers inside of it. So this column is supposed to carry a data type called decimal numbers. However, when you check what I have currently, 
all my columns are currently carrying the data type of any which is as good as nothing no data type has been specifically applied to each of the columns the sales column shows any the segment column also shows any all the columns in general are currently showing any meanwhile we have to apply data types for our columns as a standard and here also power query has also helped us to automatically detect the data type for each of our columns and that's why we have that number four step called change type and at this point if i select my order date column you will see that the data type now shows as date correctly and if i select my ship mode column you will see that the data type now shows as text also correctly and when i go over to the right hand side where i have this my sales you can also see that the sales is also being displayed as decimal number correctly now assuming for example i decide to take out the quantity column by looking for one of the options here in my power query that seems to be able to do anything that can remove a column such as this button here for remove columns if i click on that button to remove columns then i would have deleted my quantities column and you can see that i now have an extra step here called removed columns so one more time power query uses the m language for transforming data and you can see that when i use the remove column option i have a new formula right here that is the m language that is being used to delete that column and you can also see that I had an extra step in my applied steps area for removing columns. And if I like, I can actually right click on this my remove column step and go to rename it. So I can maybe put something specifically to say that I removed quantity column just so that it is easy for me to review this my apply steps later to have a better understanding of what is actually happening there however the other option i have is to actually look inside the formula bar when i see my removed column step i can look inside the formula bar and i can use this quantity text inside of it to have a clue to know which column was actually removed and another option i also have is to right click on a particular step and go to the properties of that step here i can put in a note as well so let's assume that i didn't change this one to remove quantity column and let's assume that it was exactly how it was before removed column i can change the description to put in which column was actually removed so i can say here removed quantity column i can even add because it is not useful then i can click ok and you will always see that such column that have comments will have the information icon which also makes it easy for you to review your query steps at a later time